Hey guys, it's 101R Smith. Today I'm bringing something pretty special and something very close to my heart on the channel. I am doing a review of the no grade 160th Wing Gundam Zero from Gundam Wing. Now, why is this special? For a couple of reasons. First off, it's the old no grade 160th scale Wing Gundam Zero. It is one of the hardest kits to find in its age because it's 25 years old and Bandai doesn't do a lot of reprints of this. You were lucky to catch them once every couple of years. The other special thing is I'm doing this build because I don't know if you guys know, but I'm a huge Gundam Wing fan. I would not know Gundam today if it wasn't for Gundam Wing 20 years ago. And speaking with that, this year is two special anniversaries for the anime. April 7th will be the 25th anniversary of Gundam Wing itself. This past March 6th was the 20th anniversary of Gundam Wing's English dub premiering on Toonami. And that's how I got into Gundam 20 years ago. So this is definitely going to be my passion project. Now, what I mean by that, if you haven't seen the work in progress video, is I painted the whole thing top to bottom and added a couple of cool new tricks that weren't there in the original build. And it might not be perfect, but I'm pretty proud of what I was able to accomplish. Speaking of the work in progress video, if you guys were a fan of that, tell me. Let me know if you want to see more of that whenever I do a painted build. I don't know if you want to see parts or you want to see long, long video. I'm sorry, I'm not Strider Prime, but I can try my best to do it my way. Now, the other thing about this is, this is a no grade from 1995. This takes a lot of work. Remember those old Gundam Wing kids we all grew up with? Those old 100 ones who had the floppy polycaps? This is the same thing scaled up. Admittedly, it does have the best color separation of any of the Gundam Wing kits that came out during its airing, but still, this is a product of its time, so it needs a lot of care and work on, but I'm willing to do it because Wing Gundam Zero, the Okawara version, is my favorite Gundam. Gundam Wing is still, in spite of its flaws, because it's not perfect, it's still one of my favorite animes, and I just want to show my appreciation to the show that got me into this fandom. So, paint up, build, let's see what we have. All painted up and built together, and now we have 160th Wing Gundam Zero. I gotta say, proportions are a little wonky still, but for what it was in 1995, this is a good looking kit. And I'm pretty proud about how the paint came out. I didn't like the red that came out of the box because it looked too toyish, and the white on this kit wasn't a white, it was that weird grayish white. And then the inner frame parts are parts that held the kit together was the weird purplish gray that we all had and I had to fix that. I also tried to paint the yellow on the binders which was still a hit or miss but outside it looks pretty good and I'm very proud of how it came out and even though it's from 1995 it still looks pretty damn good. Everything that you want from Wing Gundam Zero is here and Bandai did their best at the time to bring you guys what it looked like. So while it looks okay, let's go check out its articulation. Starting off with the head, the head is on a single joint made of a poly cap and can go 360 and tilt side to side. Had to glue it down though because it was too much like a bobblehead head and made it a bit tighter. So be mindful of that when you're building this. The shoulder is connected into the arm and is in a ball and socket joint and it can go 360 degrees all together. All three parts of the shoulder can split out together and can move around like that. And you're also gonna get a double jointed elbow, but that's because it's made of a poly cap. So you can bend it both ways, which to me, it looks a little creepy. Now with the hands, the hands were a little bit ahead of its time because you have double jointed fingers. All the fingers can articulate in one joint and the hand is connected by a poly cap. So this was pretty forward thinking at the time. Just like in the anime, you can flip out on the sides of the head the wing Vulcans, which look pretty good, especially painted up in gunmetal. So I like that accuracy from the anime. 
and the torso can swing around 360 due in part to the transformation into Neo Bird mode. So that's pretty cool too. Pretty easily to do, but that's about it for waist. With the front skirts and side skirts, they can go out pretty easily in front of each other, which works out pretty well. However, because of the connection to the leg, it's a polycat on a socket, you're not going to get any outward parallel movement with the legs. However, you will get a double jointed knee. This shin armor can move out front and back, and the legs and, and the feet can get a little bit of pivot in front, but there's one solid piece. Articulation is still somewhat lacking, but for 1995, they did what they did with the amount of space they had for a 160 of scale. Just like with any other model kit, the Wing Gundam Zero comes with a few accessories. It might not be too much, but there is a lot to talk about here, so let's go review the loadout of Wing Zero. First off, we're going to get the Wing Buster Shield, and it's pretty accurate to what it was in the anime with the color scheme and the yellow and what it can do. It connects with a polycat on the forearm of the arm, and it holds up pretty well because of that connection to the polycat. You are going to get a little bit of articulation to where you don't need to move the arm in order to get the, at the position that you want it to be. The other cool function about the Buster Shield is you're going to be able to keep the pile driver function of it. It works pretty well, but I might have forgotten to paint it gunmetal. And of course, Gundam Wing Zero would not be the same without a pair of beam sabers which you could pull out from the shoulder from the part of articulation that we had reviewed earlier on during the review. Not as big as the perfect grid ones, but still works. Finally, we have its most iconic weapon, the Twin Buster Rifle. I think I did a pretty good job with the paint scheme. It was the weird purplish gray. I used a gunship gray and I masked it off so I could paint it yellow because otherwise it would have been stickers. Now, can you hold up the Twin Buster Rifle? Yes, but because the elbow joints are made of polycaps, it has a tendency to droop down far easily than any Master Grade could. It does take a lot of patience and a lot of balancing in order to make it work, but you can. And you can also hold it up one by one, but it is a little tricky in that I accidentally glued the wrong handle, so I'll forever be tarnished to have to struggle to hold them together. And of course, what would Wing Gundam Zero be without its Neo Bird mode? It looks pretty good. The transformation was swift and easy. Not only two or three steps, nothing too complicated. However, because this is a no grade from 1995, there's no real proper way in displaying it. There's no action base that is available to where you can hold it up both in mobile suit or mobile armor form. So it is gonna take a lot to show it off. And one last cool addition to this kit has is that you can make the power gem glow. This is where I added in custom LED because it was originally red. It never glowed red, only once in the anime. It's usually green. I guess that was a carryover from No Grade God Gundam, so I put a green LED. It looks a lot works better. For comparison, we have its Master Grade equivalent, the Wing Gundam Proto Zero. Probably the closest we'll ever get to the TV Wing Zero Master Grade form. I'd say you can definitely tell the difference between Okawara's design and Toki's redesign. Proto Zero is a lot more angular, a lot more dynamic. Okawara is more boxy, but it still has that classic badassness. And of course, 160 of Wing Zero to 160 perfect grade Wing Zero. Yes, my Wing Zero custom is beaten down with age. This thing is six years old, but a lot of the proportions still work with each other. A granted, Wing Zero Custom is a lot more pretty, but I don't know, it works pretty well. And Wing Zero, the Okawara version, still looks pretty good. Also, comment if you want me to do a painted build of Wing Zero Custom this Christmas. Here we are at the end of the review, and I like what I have. Is it limited? Yes. Does there need to be a lot of care and attention put into the make? 160 of scale wing Gundam Zero great? Yeah, a little bit. But if you're willing to put the effort and you're willing to put the time to really bring out what Wing Zero could be, this is a great kit to have. 
Yes, not a lot of articulation. Weapons are inaccurate in color. You got a Neo Bird mode that you really can't pose off the ground, but it's a novelty kit. It's something that you build in order to be proud of your collection. You put it there for shelf presence and you put it there for the nostalgia. I'm very proud to have this kit in my collection. I'm very happy with the work that I was able to put in. Is it perfect? No, I fucked up terribly with some of the seam lines on this kit. The yellow on the wing binders, I really regret sometimes not using the sticker or not using masking properly to where it bled out, but I'm still really proud to have this kit. Now, if you want this in your collection, the price is going to be a little bit steep. It was originally 35,000 yen in 1985. Because Bandai doesn't do a lot of reprints of this, you're going to see it for at least 60 to $70. I got it for about 75 I felt, because of its age and because of the novelty, it was worth it. But I would not recommend you buy this kit for $100. I wouldn't even do it. But if you're a big Gundam Wing fan like me, you're going to want this in your collection. You're going to be proud of it. And if you do the painting and the work, you can really bring out the best in this kit. By the way, shout out to Crap Monkey for his build of his Wing Gundam Zero 160 scale. His video really gave me a lot of the ideas to go with this kit. The magnets didn't really work out because they were so strong they couldn't have stayed to the adhesive to glue them down. But he, he came up with the idea for a custom LED. And this kit would not be the same without that green LED. So shout out to Crap Monkey. I'm so happy to have this as part of my collection. And I'm so happy not only to be a Gundam Wing fan, but a Gundam fan all together. And I just gotta say, happy anniversary to Gundam Wing. This is 101R Smith, and I will see you later.